go. Hello, my dear students, and welcome to Chemistry, Chemistry 114, here at the Phillips Community College of the University of Arkansas. My name is Mark Shanley, Dr. Mark Shanley, and I'm the instructor this fall. And I wanted to welcome you to the class and give you a brief introduction to me. And I will start getting an introduction to me from you uh, as uh, the course opens and I begin to gain access to our Blackboard learning management system uh, sets of pages for our course. I just got the course shell from Michelle Waits, our um, distance education coordinator here at PCCUA. And that is, I just got it yesterday here on the weekend. And um, this being uh, Sunday evening. I'm speaking to you from my kitchen. I have a small recording studio uh, built into the side of my kitchen. It's very crowded because right now we're also renovating my mudroom, which has my pantry and uh, laundry, washing machine, and everything else in it. Uh, by everything else, I mean um, winter clothes, clothing, storage, and the like. So my kitchen is very busy, but um, still plenty of room to do our chemistry. So um, our book will be Brown and LeMay, Chemistry, a Fundamental Science or the Fundamental Science. Uh, I don't have a copy of the book yet. But I've been reading and using and teaching from that chemistry textbook since before you were born. Um, and I'll get a copy of it later this week. And I do have uh, all of the ancillary materials, the PowerPoint lectures and the like from the manufacturer. In fact, I will post uh, a lecture tomorrow that covers the first chapter of the book uh, and then we'll start the second chapter where we start looking at chemistry in detail and start looking at atoms and molecules and ions. That's the name of the second chapter in detail uh, also later this week. We will um, be running this class online asynchronously and by that I mean uh, I won't have regularly scheduled classes I will record all my lectures I will record all of the um, assignments and the like as we go along for today and for this first day what I want you to notice though besides perhaps the first lecture, uh, is that the syllabus has been posted. I have to warn you, there'll be some changes about the course syllabus. For one, we had plans to um, teach the course and have a laboratory experience that was coordinated with a company called Hands-On Labs where you get and pay extra for a box of supplies and you do some uh, simple fundamental investigations. You take that box and though they're simple, they demonstrated important fundamental properties and principles in chemistry, but I'm a late addition to this course, and what happened was uh, 
they weren't sure, they didn't know they were going to use me and they didn't know they were going to offer this course. So, nobody ordered the laboratory kits for the course. So we will improvise on our labs. And by that, I mean, perhaps we can uh, modify the lab experience so that we do some online or virtual labs. I'm not a big fan of those. Uh, we'll just see. And some, as a result, I was gonna have the lab count a fourth and we really may not have any labs. So uh, we will see how that goes. Um, so let me tell you the most important thing. And that is, as I said, I'm Mark Shanley, Dr. Mark Shanley. And you can get a hold of me two main ways. And that is by email. I am at mshanley at pccua.edu. So mshanley for Mark Shanley at pccua.edu. If you're using the pccua email, as you start to type my name, it'll come up. It's in the directory. And my, you can reach me by phone at 870-377-3499. And that number is my cell phone. I don't have an office. I'm not on campus. I am basically retired. I'm a retired chemist and I was driving to Dallas last week on uh, Interstate 30 in a tremendous rainstorm surrounded by giant 18 wheelers and everything. When um, I got a phone call, uh, luckily I have hands-on phone to my uh, radio in the dashboard in my car but um, they called and asked me if I could teach the course and I am retired from teaching for the most part except that I continue to teach at PCCUA and uh, one or two other colleges uh, one or two courses a semester I will be teaching this chemistry course at PCCUA this fall, and starting in October, I'll be teaching the same course at a different college as well, in a, um, a blended course out of uh, Searc College in Pine Bluff, where I'll do half online and, and half uh, in class and in person. So, I don't have an office. I don't have a phone on campus. But this is my cell phone. And I have campus email. So if you want to reach me, send me an email. I check my email uh, once or twice a day. So if you need a response, please call me on my cell phone. And you're welcome to call anytime. If I'm driving on Interstate 30 and in the rain and don't feel like picking up, I won't. If I'm in a meeting, if I'm teaching, if I'm eating dinner with my family, I'm not going to answer the phone. But if that's the case, just leave a message and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I love text. If you text me, and for example, I'm in a meeting up at school or something, I can do what y'all do, and that is pretend I'm paying attention and sneak an answer or a response back to you with a text. And feel free to text me for anything. My most common texts are, you know, do we have a test tomorrow? 
which you should already know. But also, is this material going to be on the test? Or also very frequently, how do you work or solve this problem or this type of problem? And in those cases, I really want to hear from you. If you need to know if there's a test tomorrow or what chapters it's over, um, it's important that you get that information. So if you text me, I can respond very quickly. Um, the questions like, how do you work number 12? We may have to do something where we can answer it in a different format or different context. I will have virtual offices. I have capabilities of responding with video. Um, I'm an Apple person, so I do use um, FaceTime. I don't use the whatever it is, uh, Facebook Messenger live video conferencing and the like. I do live out in the country here in Southeast Arkansas and I have some problems with uh, internet like everybody else here will. But in general, we'll do that. So like I said, we'll be doing this course asynchronously. I will post lectures. I will post problems and assignments from those lectures. And at least in the beginning, I will post um, video, I used to call them recitation when I taught the uh, course live at uh, previous universities. For example, I had a recitation period assigned to this class. So you went to class for, it's a four hour course, three hours lecture, mm -hmm. one hour lab. And you went to class three hours a week. And then you went to lab for science majors just always get uh, the bad end of the deal on this, but for three or four hours a week for one hour credit. We also had to go for an extra hour or more of recitation, which may have been taught by myself or one of my graduate students, where we did problem solving and gave you an opportunity mm -hmm. to interact with instructors the course itself. I'll try to do that in a video format. Um, gather questions, answer questions, work sample problems, at least in the beginning, work the actual problems and show you how, um, how things are done. Mm -hmm. So a little bit more of the introduction to me. I just wanted to take five or ten minutes here, uh, five minutes more, and tell you about myself, why I'm qualified to teach a course and uh, a little bit more about what we're going to do. So this is your a welcome video. I will have uh, a video lecture over the first chapter for you to watch and an assignment from the first chapter for you to complete um, posted uh, mm -hmm. sometime Monday. Okay? And then... Mm -hmm. we'll move on, you know, to chapter two and the like. And I'll have regular postings and things for you. So I need you to check it to Blackboard every day. Uh, so a little bit about myself. I'm Mark Shanley, Dr. Mark Shanley. And that brings up another subject and that is I will be posting this little introduction to Blackboard, to our course shell. But before I do that, it'll be uploaded to YouTube. And if you would, um, you can see these, perhaps have them run more quickly, have them run more easily, and have you can have access to them before um, Though it's not long after I upload them that I link them into our course shell, you can also see this at my YouTube channel, 
which is Dr. Mark Shanley. So if you go to YouTube, it is Dr. Mark Shanley. Now you'll see 50 or 100 or so video in there and uh, a lot of them are older video lectures, video lab discussions, uh, video problem solving sessions from previous courses over the past, some of them are four years old or so, um, from other colleges, from when I was teaching high school and the like. So let me tell you a little bit about myself. I'm Mark Shanley. I'm a simple country biochemist from Texas, and I went to college in, at a community college called San Antonio College in uh, downtown San Antonio on San Pedro Avenue down there. And I had an excellent uh, chemistry teacher, Professor Gailey, and he um, was inspiring. I also had a very good organic chemistry instructor. Dr. Lewis was uh, really something. Uh, old German fellow who uh, I took organic chemistry one summer at 7 in the morning. Very unusual the course offerings at a large major metropolitan college. That being said, I went to San Antonio College for two and a half years, going every summer. Mm -hmm. uh, graduated with, you know, 79 hours from there. Uh, took every course they had and then had to go somewhere else. And I applied to and transferred to Texas A&M University in College Station, Texas. And when I got there, I thought I would be a chemistry major and they told me I would have to take physics over again because I took regular college physics and not the calculus-based engineering physics required for the chemistry majors there. And I just decided I wasn't going to be a chemistry major anymore. I became a biochemistry major. And there in the Department of Biochemistry and Biophysics, I finished my undergraduate degree and stayed and did my PhD uh, in biochemistry and biophysics, working in uh, molecular systems and enzymology, uh, catalysis of chemical reactions uh, using organic catalysts turned enzymes found inside of cells. And Finished my PhD in 1982. Uh, actually got my degree in 83 and went to Yale University to complete a professional internship typical of the sciences uh, where I continued my studies in chemistry. I was the Yale Selenese Biotechnology Fellow for three years at Yale University, working in the laboratory of Dr. Nicholas Ornston. He's a member of the National Academy of Science. And what we had was a joint industry and academia university program where scientists at the university collaborated with scientists at Selenese Chemical Company. They're best known for their um, fibers, especially four trail polyester, uh, and they no longer exist. They were bought out by the giant German company, A.G. Herbst. Though a remnant of my group persists as a biotechnology biomedical company uh, called Celgene, Selenese Genetics. Um, Anyway, we were working on, we'd like to say, bacteria that could break down toxic aromatic compounds in the soil. 
but we weren't really interested as a chemical company of preserving the environment. Those toxic aromatic chemicals in the soil, like benzene and toluene, uh, those are aromatic components found in oil and tar and the like. Those can be broken down through a metabolic pathway in the bacteria that ultimately forms adipic acid. It's called the beta ketoadipic pathway. And I cloned uh, five genes from a bacterium, Acinetobacter calcoacidicus, particularly well suited for uh, industrial applications. I cloned the genes for the breakdown. And you don't know at this point in your career what adipic acid, but it's one half of nylon. So even though we were breaking down toxic aromatic chemicals, we were taking one chemical that's a relatively cheap commodity or you know feedstock chemical and making a much more expensive commodity chemical and starting with a cheap chemical, finishing with a more expensive one, doing it for profit ultimately, because that was the role of selling these corporation was to make a profit. It was a very interesting, wonderful experience, and after three years at Yale, I returned to Texas. I took a job at Southern Methodist University as a professor of biochemistry. Um, I taught chemistry there and biochemistry and graduate biochemistry there. And in so doing, um, had an endowed chair. I was the James Trustee Professor of Microbiology because even though I was a chemist and working on chemical reactions and chemical pathways, uh, I was using microorganisms in my research. Uh, you don't know much history of SMU, but they're frequently, when someone says Southern Methodist University in downtown Dallas, Texas, uh, right off of Central Expressway, they remember, oh yes, SMU, they're the only college to have ever gotten a death penalty, and they've had their football program shut down for a couple of years. And in the midst of that uh, turmoil, the uh, academics were not given the attention they deserve. And I left the college and moved up to a town in Texas, Denton, Texas, to the University of North Texas, where I taught for another 15 or 20 years. Um, I retired as an associate professor with tenure from the University of North Texas in 2000 and um, basically retired. Uh, after a nice career. I've published, what, 30 or 40 papers. I've got five published DNA sequences in the gene bank. I've worked on and collaborated in writing textbooks. I've prepared the uh, questions and the animations and the illustrations for textbooks, uh, other book chapters and the like. Um, when I was at the University of North Texas, I taught uh, biochemistry, graduate biochemistry courses like proteins and enzymes. I taught uh, medical biochemistry. Uh, and in fact, they don't have a true biochemistry department as such. The biochemists there were, when the first year I got there, still affiliated with the what was called Texas College of Osteopathic Medicine at that time with the medical school, now known as UNT or University of North mm -hmm. Texas Health Science Center, Fort Worth. So I've taught medical students and uh, biochemists and chemists alike. And I've been teaching this course, uh, I guess, since you know, the 80s. Okay, so uh, for, for quite some time. And I'm very familiar with your book, though I don't have a copy of it. I don't have a recent copy of it. So 
until I get a copy later this week. It'll be waiting for me, but like I say, I have to drive up to campus and get it. Um, I may not give you page numbers as such, and I'll be telling you about some other aspects of your book and chemistry books that you may or may not use in the future, especially those of you going into science, engineering, and medicine. Um, and just to give you a preview, there is a website called Chem Libre where every chemistry book in the world is available for free. Um, not every chemistry book in the world, obviously, but a, core, a chemistry book for every chemistry course you can imagine can be found at this website, Chem Libre, Free Chemistry, which is a joint project of the University of California system and the National Science Foundation. And basically all chemistry books from here on out are free. They're called OERs, Open Education Resources. And we will be linking to and referring to them. Uh, so, say more about that when we get to that and I have the computer in front of me to show you what I'm talking about. Um, after North Texas, I came to Arkansas. A little bit about me personally, I have 10 children, uh, four still living at home, and I had children at the time when I retired from the uh, college in 2000 mm -hmm. and when I retired I did it to stay home and take care of my children become a stay-at-home dad and uh, I at one point needed a job and needed a job where I could take care of my kids and that means I had to have a schedule that aligned with them and I began teaching in the k-12 system so I've also taught chemistry not just at the college level, but at the high school level, including chemistry and AP chemistry, which is basically freshman chemistry. So, um, and I've taught this course uh, for PCCUA, uh, what, for about three years now? So, I've taught this course for this college Four or five times. Mm -hmm. I don't remember how many times I've done it. And I'm teaching concurrently with some other, uh, with at least one other college right now. And in fact, if anybody else calls, I'm going to tell them no, I'm not going to teach your course. But uh, they're, they know they have an accomplished chemist in the area who enjoys teaching and who can help them out. So that is why I'm here. I'm retired, but I don't want to turn into the furniture and that I sit in in my living room. I want to keep myself active and teaching and reading about chemistry and working problems and helping others learn mm -hmm. and giving them the benefit of my experience is what, I guess, keeps me young. Mm -hmm. So I'm happy to be here. I hope you are happy to be here. We will have a semester of learning chemistry. It's hard. There's numbers, there's math, there's problems, and you're gonna get four hours of college credit from the University of Arkansas or on a University of Arkansas transcript, mm -hmm. you know, University of Arkansas system transcript, and you don't get that for nothing, but follow along I'll you know be on the journey with you and help you as much as I can again my phone number 870-377-3499 call me anytime so far I've always given students my cell phone number no one's called me at 2 in the morning to come throw their bail or change their flat tire but it, but if you have a flat tire and you're near me Call me and I will help you because I'd rather you, you know, get the help you need. So uh, let's try to think of a good way to close this up. Get your book, 
check in on the Blackboard course shell for us. Look over the syllabus. I'm going to change it up a little bit with our grading because uh, the lab kits were not ordered. So that little part about the lab and the lab kits, uh, you don't have to worry about. Uh, they put this course together at the last minute, but I'm always happy to step in and I've taught it many times. So it's really no problem for me to be starting here the day before classes and getting to our class and we have the whole semester ahead of us to complete eight to 10 chapters of the book and get through that portion of the course that we're required to do to mm -hmm. demonstrate that we've covered and mastered this amount of material as described in the course catalog and as required by, you know, the Arkansas uh, ADHE, Arkansas Department of Higher Education. They set the standards for these courses and I'm contractually obligated to teach what that catalog description says we're teaching because when you take that transfer credit to another college, they'll have expected you to, um, if not mastered, at least been exposed to this level of material. So, uh, until I get the next, uh, the first video lecture posted, which will be, you know, here in this course show Monday. Take care and goodbye now.